Hello everyone. In this video I will show you how you can have dependent drop-down fields in your form. This form is being populated using Google Sheets. Here is the sheet that is populating the dependent drop-downs in our course sign-up form. It contains a list of courses spread across several categories and also lists its price. When we select a category and a course it auto-populates its price. Let's see that in action by quickly filling this form. Hit the Submit button. And here you can see the entry has been recorded in the Course Sales tab. Now, how do you customize this to suit your requirements? It's a little bit tricky, so I will suggest you watch this tutorial till the end. First of all, you need to mind the following. Your record sheet name. Here it is named Course Sales. Plain drop-down sheet that can contain several drop-down lists. Here it's name drop-down. Sheet containing dependent list. You can have several dependent lists. In our case, we are using only one dependent list and it's named courses. You also need to observe the exact spelling of the header fields in both the drop-down list. We will be hooking them in the script when required. Any error in the spelling will cause errors in the app. Now, Let's open the script editor by going to Extensions and then clicking Apps Script. I am using Vue.js and Element UI framework to build the form. Here you can see different form elements to render fields like Customer Name, Course Category, Course and its price. First thing to notice is vModel Directive, which binds form field value with the JavaScript form object defined below. We are writing form.customer, form.category, and so on to access different form field values. And here you can see the form object. When you edit, add or remove any property inside this form object, then you will have to change it accordingly in the vModel directive also. There should be no shortage or excess of properties inside the form object with respect to the form above. Now, moving on to the implementation of the dependent list. Notice, I have used category options and course options. And both of them are computed properties, and we do so by writing it inside a computed block. First, we fetch the dependent list from our Google Sheet when the form loads. We do this inside a mounted block. This calls get dependent dropdown method using client side API google.script.run. It also passes an array containing the sheet names which have got a dependent list. Here you can see I have provided courses inside this array. You can have multiple comma separated sheet names. Now let me show you this function in the app script. This is the function which fetches a dependent list. It loops through each sheet provided as parameters and then it converts the sheet data into a JSON array and stores it inside a dictionary named dropdowns. And then the dependent dropdowns are finally returned. Let me show you the structure of this data returned by this function. And here you can see the dropdown object. 
it has a sheet name as a key, and then an array of JavaScript objects representing each row. This will be called from the HTML form, and it will be processed there to construct dependent options. Now let's go back to the form. Once we get the dependent drop-down object, we extract category options from it inside this computed block. We use map and filter to get the unique categories. Then we get options for courses depending on the category selection. We first filter the courses based on the selected category and then map it over to get courses. Finally, we return the course rate for the selected course. Notice the different keys we have used here like courses, course category, course, and prices. It should match exactly with what we have in the spreadsheet. And this courses is the sheet name containing the dependent list. Then these computed properties are hooked inside the form. You can see we are using those computed properties as option sources here. Notice, when a course is selected, we assign the dynamically computed course rate to price within the form object. Next, you can change the record sheet name here. If it does not exist in the spreadsheet, it will be created by the script. And the keys inside this form object will be transformed into the header in the record sheet. So you don't need to prepare the record sheet. It will be created automatically when you submit the form. This is all you need to know to customize it. Just be mindful about the spellings. Now let me explain how to make this yours. First of all, make a copy of this spreadsheet. You will find the link in the description below. Once opened, you will see a custom menu named Data Entry. When you click it, you will see several forms. This video is a continuation of my previous video titled Data Entry Using Modal Form. Therefore, you are seeing several forms. You should watch that video also. Now, open the course form. When you click it for the first time, it will ask you to authorize the code. Go ahead and grant all the required permissions. Then, if required, click the button again. Now, let's do a quick entry to test it. and it's working as expected. I will post the links and references in the description box. Feel free to learn and experiment by making a copy of this spreadsheet. If you like the video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.